Hello and welcome back and that is right today I want to talk about a brand new NAS that frankly is one of the most interesting NASs I've talked about on the channel for a very long time. I want to talk about the Zimmer Cube. This is the new NAS that's just about to appear, it may already be live by the time you're watching this, appearing on Kickstarter and given the brand in question Icewave have already had two successful campaigns in the form of the Zimmer Board and the Zimmer Blade. This is one that, personally, I'm going to take quite seriously. Crowdfunding NASs I've talked about on the channel in different shapes and form over the last few months. Indeed, the whole of 2023, if you want to be precise, with several Kickstarter campaigns and the history of Kickstarter NASs uh, covered here on the channel. But this one, I would say I'm more interested in and intrigued by than any of the others. Why is it? Well, I'll give you a quick summary of the specifications before you hop onto the laptop. We are talking about a system that not only arrives with six SATA hard drive bays and arrives with four M2 NVMe bays. It's also seemingly built on a very similar framework to the John's bow case. When we're looking, you'll see it later on, it's a very similar build architecture to the John's bow, but it also addresses a number of issues people had with the format of this system, even compared with the N3 from John's bow. In, in, the, in their new system, not only is it going to give you those six bays of storage and them two NVMe bays, but on top of that, they're saying it's going to arrive with four 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, but also Thunderbolt 4 connectivity on the rear. That's right, this is going to have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, it's going to have four 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, it's going to have HDMI 2.0 and DisplayPort 1.4, so 60 frames per second at 4K. It's going to be running on an Intel 12th Gen 10 core i5 processor with support of DDR5 memory and Gen 3 and Gen 4 PCIe support throughout. That is monstrous and on top of that it's going to be arriving in two different formats one is going to be the beefier one that's going to have all of the bits and bobs that i just talked about known as the zimmer cube octa and there's a smaller version called the zimmer cube quad and that's one is going to arrive with that new intel n100 cpu obviously things are going to scale in there's only two nvmes rather than four nvmes it's not going to have thunderbolt 4 because of the lack of lanes on that gen 3 times 9 architecture system there and it's going to stumble down into ddr4 support but even based on that lowering of those specifications based on that hardware architecture we're still talking about both the zimmer cube octa and the zimmer cube quad being incredibly game changing systems in terms of that hybrid middle ground that I keep talking about between turnkey NAS solutions and full DIY, these pre-built solutions that are open source ready. But that is enough of that. Let's hop onto the laptop and take a good look at these specifications and the build of this device. So straight away, let's face it, look at that chassis design and then look at this chassis design here. A lot of similarities, right? Wait till you see further down this page. Again, all the pages I'm going to talk about today are linked in the description below, but I just wanted to highlight the similarities. Now, I'm not going to say that they're just repurps in the Johnsbow build. It is clearly a completely different case, but the aesthetics and the design that mean that either it's a ride from the same manufacturer as John's Bow's chassis design, or it borrows a lot of those elements to it. Now, if you look at the casing all the way along, there on the front, you've got the hold of the USBs there. Apparently, they are uh, one of those at least is USB 3.2 Gen 2. But again, whether you go for the quad or the Octa will make all of the difference. At the time of recording, the Kickstarter is not live. I don't know how much longer it's going to be before it is, but you can sign up for it if you choose. That's on you. Obviously, I'm going to keep an eye on it here on the channel. But even some of those early specifications, you can see that on the top of the screen, uh, that 164 TB of storage presumably is targeting the fact that each one of those SATA bays is going to support a 22 TB drive. And then you look at M2 NVMEs these days, which can reach dizzying heights of up to 8 terabytes now indeed we're reviewing one it may be already live on the channel an 8tb adlink a95 gen 4 8tb ssd you can get now now that cpu the i5 as mentioned it's the um the i5 which unit i can look at my notes over there it's the i5 1235u cpu more on that when we go to the specifications the chat gdp stuff there you can largely ignore if you ask me it's just part of the docker and container augmentation and uh, installation there that you can have via the casa OS that we'll talk about later 
And of course, the quad 2.5 gigabit Ethernet connectivity we've discussed already is something that you can only get four ports if you go for the octa-core version or the octo version. But if you go for the quad version, you only get two 2.5 gigs. And that time 16 slot and the number of M2 NVMEs also scale accordingly to whichever version you go for. But the very interesting point is to do with that Thunderbolt 4 connectivity, I would say, because Thunderbolt 4 and indeed USB 4 is becoming more accessible there. Nothing I'm seeing on this page as we go through it indicated to me at least that they could be used natively as network ports. So what I mean by that is when you look at QNAP's range of Thunderbolt 4 based solutions that are rolling out within the next few weeks from what I understand, those allow you to directly connect with a NAS system over Thunderbolt because they have an IP relationship uh, which means that the host client relationship normally dedicated to an external drive is malleable. Now in the case of this, I'm willing to bet that those Thunderbolt 4 ports are still going to work on the idea that the NAS system is the host system and if you try to connect with your client system and therefore you won't be able to use Thunderbolt to directly connect with the device. It's quite an, an timely and incredibly expensive and finicky procedure to do that. That said, if Zimmer Cube and Icewell can do that with those ports, that makes this even better. Nevertheless, having Thunderbolt 4 connectivity on there does open the door, of course, if the NAS is working to the client, to use Thunderbolt to 10G adapters. That's right. That means this system, even though it has PCIe upgrade slots, I think thanks to those Thunderbolt slots there being on the NAS system, and if the NAS system is working as a host capacity, that means adding 10 GPE to this thing suddenly got significantly easier. Obviously, it's going to have to focus a lot more on the drivers that are being utilized there, because if you're running on the Casero OS, you're going to need to know that you've got the Aquantia drivers to run something like this. But the idea that there is the potential with the right modified drivers or the right OS to add 10 GPE to this NAS system without having to use PCIe upgrade cards is hugely significant for me as far as upgrading a system throughout the course of its life and adding additional bandwidth to a powerful CPU and enough storage there. Now, again, we've got a closer look at the system with, although we're lacking the top level ventilation there, the front panel appears to be ventilated and we've got that side ventilation. Again, exactly the same as what we find there on that Johnsbow case. Still very good, although I am intrigued to see what they're going to do about active cooling above and beyond just the rear cooling fans, but more on that in just a moment. Another thing I think it's worth highlighting is, as you can see there, this system arrives with trays. Now, the reason I bring that up is when I keep making these comparisons to the John's, John's Bow system, in all of my reviews of the N2 and the N3 stuff coming up, one of the things I didn't like about that case is these horrible rubber straps. I like having trays. Trays are better for hot swapping, then they're less malleable and they're removing them out. And although these little rubber things allow a dissipation of vibration throughout the system, I would still say I would prefer trays every single day of the week. And that system that we're looking at right here, having those active trays is a good thing as far as I'm concerned. But moreover, you see where it says the four M2 expansions? That's because they live in this little slot here. The M2s are on a predefined card, which unfortunately I can't see anything on this page telling me whether that slot just slides out because I can imagine it's gonna to attach to the base of the main motherboard inside this system. That is definitely gonna be a pre-designed motherboard inside there. It's not just gonna be an off-the-shelf ITX because the placement of some of the components, as you're gonna see, if this is more than just a prototype in a pipe dream, it's gonna require quite a specifically modified MOBO to reach that kind of placement, but you'll see that in just a moment. Again, a lot of this stuff to do with the number of movies, number of photos, that's always to the less tech verse. I'm glad it's on there, and particularly for the Kickstarter and stuff like that, but I'm not that bothered about that because it's too variable. The software, it's worth highlighting. All the indications I can see on this page is this system is going to roll out with the Casser OS, just like the Zimmer Blade did. Casser OS, of course, is a light container UI there on the front, but it has file management. It has very quick, nippy boot times there. And ultimately, in a system of this hardware architecture, whether you're looking at that N100 quad-core um, comparable Celeron Pentium processor, or you're looking at the more highfalutin i5, that's a lot of hardware for you to get to grips with and start running your containers with having this thinner layer to the bare metal and having that container uh, 
uh, level hypervisor being as thin and quick and nippy as possible there in the background again when it comes to the cpu it will depend on which system you go for but moving forward from that we go past the os again another highlight in there of the fact it's running on that casa os with all of those applications and services that we've already covered uh, previously again lovely stuff if you've not used casa os you can head over to um, their own website and test it out for free just google casa os it's right there and again things like chat GT GEPT, we're seeing that integrated a lot more into these file servers for quicker access to live data. But again, it's more of a container that you run independently within uh, the OS rather than a out-the-box service. Now, maybe that has changed. Maybe when this rolls out because of the hardware this is including with, that will be included as standard as a means to find and access your files, not unlike we've seen uh, things like QNAP with QTS integrating AI into their QSearch, uh, QFind and AI-supported photo recognition. But there wasn't enough confirmation on this page from what I could see that that is something they're going to roll out and integrate into the system or rather than just a container that is an option. Now, that's the other big one, the placement and uh, confirmation of those Thunderbolt ports, one on the front, one on the back, and those 2.5 gigabit Ethernets there. Now, there's going to be users, no doubt, that are going to say, why isn't it rocking 10G out the gate? Now... I would love 10G out of the gate, and for those of you that have followed this channel and our coverage of the Store Axa, you'll know that they splintered off into multiple configurations that they were offering backers there, some of which arrived with one or two 10GBE ports with the inclusive setup. And the CPU inside this, I believe, was one of the same CPUs from the Store Axa configurations of that Kickstarter that's still in progress. But more importantly, Soldering on those 10Gs onto this board would require additional work and they'd have to come out with more configurations, I imagine. So the fact that you've got PCIe card upgrades and the fact that you can use, hopefully, those uh, Thunderbolt 4 ports to use the adapters that I've mentioned to add 10GB ports should be enough. Although there probably will still be users looking at this configuration thinking of four 2.5G ports with or without SMB multi-channel support feeling those may be something of a bottleneck we'll have to wait and see now here was where i uh, came two of my largest confirmations about this device number one the fact that it is you know incredibly similar to what we've seen in the john's bow in two case I mean, even at a casual glance, with the Zimmer Cube on the left and the John's Boat N2 on the right, there is tremendous similarities between them. However, we also have to acknowledge that the John's Boat case there has a different configurations and placement of some of those parts. Certainly, where you've got the blank plate with the PCIe there on the John's Boat has now been replaced with that M2 NVMe card. And as you can see, for that card to be there, it's going to need to attach to the baseline of that system alternatively maybe it's using you know a zip cable but i can't really see that and the other thing i'll highlight is i can't see where the psu is on the zimmer cube because when you look at it there at least as far as that design is are they going to be going with uh, much as we saw with the john's bow n3 the placement of the psu integrated more behind that front panel there or is it going to be an external PSU? Is it, you know, a sideline PSU or a, you know, a compact almost uh, rack mount PSU being fed in to the rear there? Again, there's more images coming up soon. But overall, the point I'm making here is there are definite differences between these two cases. And certainly there is an argument that compared with the higher uh, John's Bow N3 casing here, and there will be things you'll see later on that make it comparable to this, there's no denying that right now, Although similar, it is clearly a different case that they've spent time developing there if this does come to fruition. So, circling back into it and going all the way back down, find out where we left off, we can take a little look at the rear of this chassis. Once again, I can't see the PSU, which once again, although you can see a PSU jack at number six there for the power socket, I can't see where that PSU is being fed in and perhaps... Is this going to be a system that's going to be using a large powered external brick? I'm still going to have to wait for more confirmation because, again, the Kickstarter still hasn't started. But nonetheless, it does look like a very well put together case there. And once again, if we look at the rear of the John's Boat N3, we can certainly see similarities, such as the two PCIe slots there on the side, the placement of that main board being moved more towards the middle as we can see on the images there on screen for the Zimmer Cube. Overall, I think there are clear similarities. Bear in mind, again, we are looking at the rear of what looks like to be the quad version, not the octa version. 
which brings us on to the specifications. Let's zoom out ever so slightly and get a little understanding about the devices and what they're arriving with. Again, we're seeing either the N100, both Alder Lake series, or that 12th generation i5 there. Huge differences between them there in terms of memory support, not only the number of slots, I might add, but also the number of ports. And as you can see, the N100 version does not arrive with Thunderbolt 4 connectivity there. Again, limitations of the lanes. Bear in mind that the N100, as mentioned, is a Gen three times um, with nine lanes to play with but I believe there are 20 lanes to play with at gen 4 and gen 3 depending on whether you go for the efficient or power cores um, there on that order lake I think it is two and eight um, uh, uh, separation between power and efficiency cores um, but apart from that you there is clear definition there about the rest of the specifications which according to this page at least indicate that the majority of the other specifications are carried across between the two of them as you can see there there's DC1900 for that port there, which again, still once again leans into this idea of an external PSU, or at least a well-hidden internal, but we still haven't got confirmation on that. And that's really it. The last thing, of course, is that it arrives with that CASA OS, something we've already confirmed there. But overall, I would say it is a very intriguing NAS for us to be talking about. And I would argue right now that if the Zuma Cube does finish crowdfunding, and let's face it, as mentioned, the company's got form. We've looked at Zimmer Cube, I'm sorry, Zimmer Blade. We've looked at the Zimmer board. We did our review and we were pleased with it. And indeed, the Zimmer Blade continues with its crowdfunding campaign, now three times that of its goal over on Crowd Supply. And a quick Google, if you want, on another tab of Zimmer Blade, at the very least, shows that there are physical units out there, which is generally an exceptionally good sign of completion there. And to have two crowdfunding campaigns back to back succeed makes me err. Uh, that this may be something to at the very least keep an eye on there. But without confirmation of the pricing of it at this stage, get yourself signed up, but don't necessarily jump on board until you know the pricing. Because although the N100 one seems rather modest, and I can imagine that's going to arrive definitely in the three figures, certainly unpopulated, it'll be very intriguing to see where Ice Whale and the Zimmer Cube Octa falls in terms of pricing there. Is it going to be an early backer exclusive? Is it going to be one of those ones where it's a standard price for all? Bottom line, do keep an eye on this NAS. Again, we've only got this page to go on. We don't know how legit it's going to be in reality, but based on experience with the brand, I'm erring to feeling quite positive about it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for, so much for watching. Again, we'll keep an eye on this particular one because it's very intriguing and I love anything that builds this middle ground between turnkey and open source. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.